Every three years, the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa convenes a continent gathering of all stakeholders involved in Africa's agricultural development. The sixth Africa Agricultural Science Week, held in Accra two weeks ago, was devoted to the theme Africa Feeding Africa through Agricultural Science and Innovation. Michael Bernhardt, advisor for technology transfer in VIZ, attended the Science Week and agreed to share his impressions with the platform. Michael, this was a major conference with, according to its website, more than 1,300 participants from governments, academia, donors, and civil society, with keynote speeches, different panels, field trips, and more. Which part of the conference impressed you most? From my side, the first two days of the science we were most impressed. During these first two days, we had several side events focusing on a multitude of practical and precise issues and projects. From my position as advisor for technology transfer, the discussions around the African Agricultural Technology Platform and the discussions on the lessons learned of the GDIAR challenge program, Water and Food, were most inspiring. Of course, during the later days, there were also some insightful presentations, for example, from the Equity Bank of Kenya, which highlighted uh, its financial schemes for smallholder farmers. For me, I have to say that it was my first time at the Science Week. So what struck me most was that the focus of the event wasn't, wasn't that much on scientific issues in detail, for example, when you compare it to the German Tropenthal conference, but more on, let's say, overarching issues and a lot of high-level policy conversation. What I heard anyhow from the other participants was that the science week is indeed improving regarding policy and quantity. You mentioned that before that uh, numbers of participants were quite high, more than 1,200 people. And you also have to acknowledge that people had to pay admission fees, so this event wasn't for free. And you can deduct that there was, there was a personal commitment of all the participants. And then regarding organizational management, the event was also catching up. So overall, quite a positive development in my opinion, but just the first impression. You've said that numbers of participants have been increasing over the years. Could you explain why there's such a renewed interest in agricultural research and science and technology as development tools for African food security? And what is really the potential behind that? From my point of view, of course, the food price crisis in 2007 and 2008, and then the publication of the World Bank report, Agriculture for Development, in the same year, were basically crucial for increasing attention for the field of agricultural development. And this increased attention also benefited the International Agricultural Research Endeavor core development. So when you, for example, look at the funding situation of the CBIAR, you see that in the last couple of years, funding increased substantially. So in 2012, we are at roughly 900 million US dollars, according to other calculations, even more than a billion. So the uh, renewed focus on agricultural development overall is also contributing to a renewed focus on agricultural research and development, at least on the international level. When you look then at Sub-Saharan Africa, the situation is a bit more diverse. You have the number of countries that are increasing investments in agricultural research for development, for example, take Nigeria, Kenya, or Ghana, where the Science Week was held this year. But many other countries, especially in Western and Central Africa, where funding is basically uh, stagnating, and this gap is largely filled by external donor money. Anyhow, looking at the potential of agricultural research for development, when you look at the past or 
basically the impacts of the CGIA are, you see quite quite a bit potential. For example, let me give me give me you two figures. Uh, it was deducted that due to CGIAR research in the past decades, overall food production in development countries did increase by roughly 8%, which relates to an increase in per capita consumption by 5% in developing countries. So there's quite a potential for research to contribute to agricultural development, but also challenges. The most important challenge from my perspective, perspective is to get research results into practice, find implementation partners who are able and willing to take these research results up and then bring them to scale so that you have a, a yeah, repeat of the impact you witnessed in the last decade regarding international agricultural research for development. You've mentioned already the, the interaction or the link between research and then development organizations putting that into practice. So the, the event that you attended was very much about increasing interaction among different stakeholders within current programs. But I also understand that new initiatives were announced as well, such as the Intense Africa Initiative and the African Agriculture Technology Adoption Platform. Could you briefly give us a bit of background as regards the partners behind and the objectives of these two new initiatives? Yes, Intense Africa is a research partnership for sustainable intensification of agriculture in Africa, mainly managed by CIRAD and the University of Barcelona. And there are some other smaller, smaller partners also contributing to this new initiative, for example, a couple of German universities, ONI, for example. The technology platform is one tool of the G8 initiative, the new Alliance for Food Security and Nutrition that was launched last year. And this technology platform should live up to 50 million people out of poverty by the end of 2022 through delivering improved agricultural technology to smallholder farmers. So this is just as a rough rundown of the two new initiatives. I think it's not uncommon for such initiatives to be launched. I'm wondering, what do you think, how well are these integrated into uh, the context of existing programs and, and do they fill gaps that have been identified? Or does their creation possibly also entail the risk that attention and support is taken away from existing structures and programs? Generally speaking, I would say that the two new initiatives are quite well embedded in existing structures. For example, both are linked to FARA, the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, and the host of the Science Week, and CADEP, just to name two of the most important. However, regarding Intense Africa, for me, it's not that clear how Intense Africa relates to the CGIAR research programs, which are basically kind of a point of reference regarding content of international agricultural research for development. So, so far, I see there is a kind of non-alignment, but maybe this will change in the near future when Intense Africa really starts to foster collaboration. Speaking then maybe also about the link between the technology platform and GIZ, I have to say that there are several discussions ongoing with the partners of the technology platform, USAID, World Bank, other CG centers, and collective action plan to take this technology platform further down the road and get it going. Michael, finally, the, the conference, as I said uh, in the beginning, was entitled Africa, Feeding Africa Through Agricultural Science and Innovation, clearly indicating ownership of the agenda by African stakeholders. To what extent have or will the roles of traditional donors change as regards supporting African agricultural development? 
That's a good question, and I'm not sure whether I can answer it at the moment. Because, as I told you, some countries are quite progressive regarding their investment in agricultural research for development. You mentioned Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, for example. But many others are still lagging behind. And these gaps are still filled by donor money, and this is largely traditional donor money, I would say. Also, you also have to acknowledge that there are some new actors in the field, for example, Brazil or, as we all know, China. Then with regard to overall agricultural development, the situation, I would say, is kind of similar. When you look, for example, at, at the public expenditure rates for agricultural development in sub-Saharan Africa, in many cases, it's about 5 to 10 percent of the national GDP. And in a global perspective, that is not a big amount. Moreover, when you look, for example, at CARDEP and the investment plans that were designed on a national basis, you see that there are still many funding gaps. So basically, the plans are available, what should be done, but the funding situation is not that clear. And probably I would assume that these gaps are then again filled by the traditional donor. So yes, there is some improvement and some promising initiatives and the science week was a good forum to uh, get in touch with these and to know the details. But regarding an overall positive outcome, I would say we have to talk again after the science week. I hope we can do that. That was Michael Bernhardt on his impressions of the 6th Africa Agricultural Science Week held in Accra two weeks ago. Michael Bernhardt, thank you very much. Thank you, too.